Ah, right, welcome to Preach Camp. Preach with Rashad here with another episode, another sermon coming at y'all again. Um, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, man. Good. All this NFL crazy stuff. We got the NBA about to jump off. They got all these preseason games on, man. So it's a, it's about to be a fun, a fun fall, man. Oh yeah, you got my boy Ben Simmons out here making threes now, man, and uh, Zion ducking on people in the first minute of the game. <laughs> it's you got it's it's gonna be a wild NBA season. We are gonna get that to you next week, um, but this week we uh we, we got a guest joining uh, joining us, Rudy. Uh, he, he's he's uh he from Sweet the League. He's part of our Dynasty uh, League as well. Uh, we met him well, really really good through, you know through Twitter, podcasting and stuff like that. And um, a good mind, he's smart guy. Know what he's talking about. Um, and we had a you know a really good show planned for you. Yeah, check out the podcast and uh, definitely just check out of course ours. Check out. Um, Rudy's as well. Um, he's at Sweep the League on Twitter. That's at S W E E P the T H E League L E A G U E. Um, their website is sweeptheleague dot com. Um, and of course, um, his um, co host is Geo. So that's um, that's Coach Geo on um, on Twitter. Uh, we are joined by Rudy Campos from Sweep the League uh, podcast. You can catch them live streaming on Twitter. What else you got, Rudy? What, what, what's going to uh, they, they find you at? Yeah, you can find us on uh, Facebook. We've got a Facebook page, Sweep the League. Uh, when we do stream, we stream across three platforms, which is uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and YouTube as well. Okay. Um, so we're just going to get right into it, uh, talking about the Redskins, uh, they finally let Jay Gruden go. Me and Rashad have been talking about this uh, for the past two or three weeks about who's going to be the first one to go. Um, Jay, Jay Gruden was really a knocking on the door. Hot seat was blazing, burning up. Um, but, you know, I thought they would have let them see if they can beat the Dolphins first before they let them go. I mean, especially after hanging hanging tough against the Patriots for the first half. But they decided to let them go. Um, it, 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 y'all got any thoughts about the Redskins? Uh <laughs> About their or sorry roster right now being over five. <laughs> um, I what I can say about Jay Gruden is it's pretty much long overdue that he was uh, that he had the job. I mean, originally he wasn't uh, the type of coach that should have been a head coach. The only reason why he got it because of his last name being Gruden. Um, you know that, but he had so many issues there. You can't really say he didn't have talent on any of the rosters that he coached because he actually did. Uh, it's just to me, it was just like piss poor management as far as offensive you know production and uh maybe it was just the coaching staff around him that did it but i'm not really not surprised i said he would get fired last week but it was a week later so uh yeah i'm not surprised by it i'm not surprised by it um i was thinking he was gonna lose next week and then get fired because you just can't lose to miami (laughs) but um (laughs) but um far as like his coaching tenure and stuff like that I think he kind of got a he kind of got a bad rap just because of the situation he was in. Um, from the time he took the job, he really didn't have the the full backing of leadership because when he first took the job, RG three was still the guy, but then he got hurt preseason, so then they got uh, Kirk in. So they had a winning season, made the playoffs, but every you know basically every year there was always some type of turmoil with uh, are we gonna pay Kurt Cousins, are we going to not pay Kurt Cousins? So you really couldn't build any, you know, consistency as far as, like, we're going to build around this guy. We don't believe in this guy. And then when they finally got Alex Smith just a year ago, they were off to, like, a, what, four and two start, you know, something yeah. like that. So they were headed in the right direction of competing for the playoffs. They weren't scoring a lot of points, but they were heading to the right direction of possibly being a playoff team. And even down to, like, the last week or two, that was still in play for a wild card spot. But, I mean, they went through, like, four quarterbacks last year. That didn't help. And then now you have them. They draft Haskins, who the coaching staff doesn't want to begin with. And then they throw him in the game. And he gets, you know, basically annihilated because he looks lost out there. So, <laughs> I mean, I just think it was just a bad situation for all parties involved. Mm-hmm. Um, 
he may be a guy that's better as a coordinator, but um, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him get another head coaching job to see what he can do when he has like at least fifty percent competent leadership. Yeah, and the leadership is the the main thing to me. Bruce Allen is one of the worst like presidents, GMs, whatever you want to call them, uh, in the league. And I think yeah. since he since he's been taken over, I think it's only been like like four or five teams that have been worse than the Redskins. That's you know, that's the Browns, Jaguars, um, who has been sorry? I think the Raiders. Uh, you know, it, it was basically the bottom of the barrel. And it's kind of Jay Gruden was kind of thrown in a bad, in a bad situation. You know, he had, had Matt LaFleur on staff, staff. They had Kyle Shanahan. Sean, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay. Like, they had the guys there with Jay Gruden. Um, mm-hmm. Defensively, you know, defensively, they didn't really have too many big names. But either way, it's like – they, I think, because they hired Jay Gruden, so you know, at at a time, and you couldn't really move on and and let him go for for the Cal Shanahan and Sean McVay, which hindsight they probably wish they would have. But it's like you know, when when you was always being a, a eight and eight team or making the playoffs, it's kind of hard to go ahead and move on for, from him. But it, it it was always something with the Redskins, and um, and I it, it's more it's more Bruce Allen than it is John Gruden. I mean uh, Jay Gruden, but. You gotta you gotta point to somebody first, um, and you go ahead and get them out of here. They talked about uh, I think O'Connell. I think they're, that's their OC right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they talk about trying to keep him in and see maybe if he's uh, you know capable of being the head coach. But then they make Bill Callahan uh, the the interim head coach, which doesn't make sense to me. I feel like if if O'Connell is going to be the next guy, let's go ahead and. <laughs> and, and and give him you know give him the give him the shot and give him the role especially on like with the no win situation anyway let's go ahead and see what he can do um, but you know I, I've heard other other names like they talk about Todd Bowles Eric Benning enemy from the Chiefs uh, even Mike Tomlin if he's let go from the Steelers but you know it's yeah. kind of hard to it's kind of hard for anybody to to want to jump at this job because. It, it's just like 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 Rashad said the leadership. I, I don't want to work for Dan Snyder. I don't, I don't want to work for for Bruce Allen. And I mean, you, you come you come over to this team when they spend big big money on Landon Collins, which you know, which which doesn't make any sense. They they don't they Trent Williams doesn't want to be there. They want to hold him hostage and and keep him on the sideline. And while, while their quarterbacks are getting destroyed, which you know he he won the best left tackle in the game. Yeah. Uh, and like every shot I say, and you pointed to it too. You, you throw out Haskins in the middle of a game for no reason. It, like you don't, you don't have the running backs for it. You know, or the whole line to even uh, block for the running backs. You really have only thing you got going for you is, is your D line. Your, your corners are getting killed. Linebackers, you let uh, I think it was Preston Smith go to the Packers, and now he's looking like a Pro Bowl player. I mean, Redskins got a lot of work to do, and I would not want to be a coach that want to jump at this. <laughs> I just couldn't. It's not a bad job if you think about it. I mean, you've got a young you've got a young core on the offensive side. Your defense isn't exactly horrible. I mean, it's not great, but it's not good, but it's not horrible. Um, I mean, but if you're a coach and you feel like, you know, you want to start from the bottom up, Washington's not a bad place to go. You've got Haskins at QB, you've got Darius Ice at the running back position. Uh McLaurin's actually, you know, making a name for himself right now as a rookie, so uh, the future is kind of bright in Washington. It just it's the leadership, and you're right with uh, Bruce Allen there. It's it's not going to ever get any better, but maybe Snyder will right, finally realize that and move on from him and get the uh, the front office as well as the coaching staff uh, intact. Yeah, I don't think they're bad. They can turn it around sooner than later, honestly, just because of. Yeah. I mean, look at look at Jay Gruden's tenure: nine and seven, eight seven one, seven nine seven and nine. So you're on the brink of. 500 already and they made the playoffs one year and they were close you know until the whole Alex Smith tragedy happened stuff like that so they have stuff in place but I think if if uh Allen stays there and they get the wrong coach again you're looking at and do you even believe in Haskins this could be another 10 years in the bottom man 10 years in the basement if you don't get the right leadership in place yeah well hey, that's the thing though they was our I mean Yes, Jay Gruden. Jay Gruden is a Jay Gruden is a solid coach. I, I mean, I don't know he got fired, but I mean, it just like I said, somebody has to take the blame first. It's always going to GM always going to get him out of here before him before he get out of here. That that's just how you know, that's how it unfolds. I'm not really the reason why I, I'm I'm not a big on the Redskins job is 
Dan Snyder, well, yeah, that, that's that's one. But Dan Snyder thinks that um that they're like they're good, so he goes out and and does questionable things. Uh, because because I'm not I'm not willing to pay this huge contracts to players when we need to be working on other things. You know, like we need to work on our building our old line. Um, Trent Williams don't want to be there. Why, like, why is he still in the building? Like, let's get him out here. Like, teams want him for a first round pick. Let's 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 build. Let's let's get assets. Let's let's work on you know getting things for Haskins for the future. It's you know it's kind of like a it's kind of like they they don't know what they want to do. They don't have no direction. Which which I'd say I always always point back to the leadership part. Um, and once once they figure out what they want to do, which I would love for Mike Tomlin to go there, um, a, a culture changer, but. I don't, I don't want him to put himself in that situation either, but you know, you, you need some kind of guy who can, who can, who can, who can, right, you know, captain the ship, so, so, so to speak, because you, you need somebody strong, more strong headed than GM, because because Allen and, and Snyder, they don't know what they're doing at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I mean, it's like the Jerry Jones situation. You know, Jerry had control over the Cowboys draft picks, signings, and everything for so long. You know, he finally gave it up pretty much to uh, Stephen Jones, and now the Cowboys have turned, you know, everything around. Great drafts the past few years. They brought in uh, certain free agents. They brought in, you know, guys via trade. You know, Snyder doesn't really have his hands so much in the cookie jar, but he has enough to where it's it's ruining the team. And, you know, you, you put a lot of the blame on Allen as well, which I, I totally agree with that. Um, it's just the front office. You know, if you get a coach in there like Tomlin, someone who's not afraid to speak his mind and is tough on players as well as his higher ups, that could be a game changer for Washington. And like you said earlier, I mean, they could change it around sooner than later. I can't see him doing it. Pittsburgh is too good of a situation as far as just oh, le- yeah, ownership I leadership mean, wise. If Pittsburgh let him go, I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. It'd be I hard think, to see Pittsburgh letting him go, though. I mean, yeah. it's kind of an unfortunate situation him in Pittsburgh. So it's kind of like you're giving him uh, a muck this year, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's just the names that that Dan Snyder wanted, um, which was Todd Bowles, Tomlin, and Eric Benamy, Which I wouldn't. Well, which him for him, he probably should just stick around until he get a, a a better a better opportunity. But um, move, moving along, staying staying in the NFC. Uh, I want to talk about like so far through five weeks, the eleven teams out of the sixteen teams in the NFC are above five hundred. Um, you know the whole NFC North, three teams out of the NFC West. You got the Saints and the Panthers, the Cowboys and the Eagles. Um, we 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 all knew coming into the season that the NFC was going to be hard, but we didn't. I didn't really think it would be eleven. I was thinking more eight, maybe possibly nine. Um, you know, coming to the season, but you talking about you know uh, all these teams are, are are pretty good, and and in, this weekend coming up, the the Buccaneers play Panthers, so if they if they bucking to get a win, they'll be three and three, and right there in the mix with everybody else too. So you know, it's kind of it's it's kind of like we it's like we we expected it, but we didn't really didn't think it would would be happen, especially that many one sided teams in one in one conference, especially when you. You know, you most of the games you play are are NFC. You know, so it's not like it's East and West thing. But uh, what are y'all thoughts on the NFC so far? Um, because really, really, you 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 have a lot. You have a lot of teams that can win. You got the Saints winning without a, uh, their starting quarterback. You 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 have you have uh, Green Bay basically winning by their defense first before Aaron Rodgers. The Lions are you know showing showing up. You got Seattle. Russ played amazing MVP level right now. That's just a couple teams, but uh, what are y'all over overall thoughts so far? I'm still rocking with my Eagles, man. Um, I think they're gonna win the division. Um, their their record isn't indicative of how good they really are because basically after the first second week they started having guys get banged up, and if Aguilar can catch a pass against the Falcons, the Falcons don't have any wins, and the Eagles are almost undefeated. So the Eagles are still pretty good. And I'm waiting to see how the Cowboys can bounce back because they beat up on three of the worst teams, and then now they lost back to back to um, you know solid opposition. So I want to see how the Cowboys respond. Um, my 49ers, my surprise team, there four and zero, so I'm happy about that. And uh, I think Russ is uh, one or two for MVP along with Mahomes, and um, 
that's pretty much it for me, man. Like everything else is kind of going according to plan. I thought the Packers would be pretty good. Um, my, my Saints being a pulled back candidate, not looking too good right now, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean the NFC is is wide open. I mean you're you're talking. You've got you know Christian McCaffrey, who I have as actually as a front runner for MVP this year. Uh, playing ball down in Carolina, you know, the Falcons, being a Falcon fan, it's tough. I mean, we've never recovered since the Super Bowl loss to the Patriots, and we we'll never will recover. So that's kind of like the surprise team for me that they, you know, they have the offensive weapons to compete with anybody in the NFL pretty much everywhere. They just can't get it going. Uh, San Francisco, you know, it's kind of a it, – I want to say it's a surprise, but it really isn't. I mean, they've got a good – they've got an above-average defense – um, with Shanahan there, he's got the pieces in place, especially for the running game. Their running game is pro- it's superb. It's probably one of the best in the league right now. What's scary is that we haven't seen Jimmy G really be Jimmy G yet with Shanahan. So he's getting his first full year in with them. Uh, so San Francisco looks bright. And the, the whole NFC, I mean, Cowboys, Eagles, it, it's a toss-up right now. And I'm gonna even going to throw another team in there because once you get Saquon Barkley back, who knows how that Giants team is going to look on offense because with Daniel Jones playing the way he has been playing, you really can't rule them out to finish, you know, above 500 on the season as well. So, yeah, I mean, if you had to take a one clear cut team from the NFC, like who's going to be the best, um, you know, I'm going to stick with the Packers on the NFC side, just because you're not seeing old Aaron Rodgers trying to win games with his arm. He's got a running game. Now the offensive line is actually a little bit steadier. But the scary part is, is if you give Rodgers as well as Tom Brady a defense, um, yeah, you're not going to beat that team, you know, all the time. So uh, I still got Green Bay, you know, pretty much the top team there. When Drew Brees gets back, you're going to see the Saints bounce back. I mean, it's a toss-up, and I'm, I'm excited because finally, you know, the NFC is, you know, good again, in my opinion, after so many years having so many bad teams in the NFC. Yeah, I still think it's, it's it's very wide open. I think a lot of every team I can I can go down and I can nitpick, you know, a, a, a flaw with them because obviously no team can be perfect. Um, and it, it's just, it's just it's just matter of of a matter of w- when you play somebody, where you play somebody, um, the, and the breaks you can catch. Like, uh, for example, how how great was it for the NFC North teams to see the Bears lose to the Raiders? Um, you know, you know, so, so, something like that. A, a game, a game that you don't expect them to lose. You know, the, a game that you got to keep up. All of a sudden, the Lions, the Packers. You know, all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we're, we're right there now. Um, you know, we got a game above the Bears, with the, with, especially with Mitchell, Mitchell Biscuit being hurt. Um, a team, a team I thought would would have, would have faded away by now. Which, why you said McCaffrey's MVP, uh, MVP, the Panthers. You know, they start off on two with Cam Newton, and and I was ready. To, you know, I, I had them in the playoffs. You know, coming into the season, I was ready to throw them up throw them out because I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to get from Kyle Allen. Um, the receivers ain't really – I mean, obviously Cam Newton ain't giving nobody opportunities, but, you know, it. You know, we, we talked about whole, in fantasy the whole time about DJ Moore and Curtis Seven going to break out. Well, I didn't see it yet. You know, Greg Olson had looked great for some time, but then sometimes he didn't. I was like, man, what is what what is the Panthers actually going to be? Is, is it McCaffrey or Bust? But the defense played good. They're showing up. The Cowboys and Eagles, they're going to go back and forth the whole season. Uh, NFC West, I didn't think it would be this competitive, but uh, you know the Rams, who've been good over the last two years, yeah, you know, I think they're the third best team in, in their division so far through five weeks. You know, so it, it's kind of it, it's, it's it's crazy. Uh, I know me Rashad said the Saints be pulled back, and we thought they wouldn't like we thought they would go two uh, one and two right now without Drew Brees, and they end up being three and zero. So yeah, you know that kind that kind of saved them. The thing about the Saints, though, that the crazy to me thing about it is, last year Drew Brees' arm, like you saw throughout the season, it got it got worse and worse and worse. And I think in the latter half of the of the year, he was throwing picks. He he wasn't throwing the ball. He wasn't throwing over two hundred like fifty passing yards no more. And you saw in the Rams game, even though they want to cry about the cry about the the pass interference call, I mean Drew Brees still picking overtime. You know, so it's not like it's not like you didn't have a chance to win the game. Yeah. Um, but now with Teddy doing what he's doing and Drew Brees getting the rest, you know, he's going to come back. Drew Brees will come back refreshed, having five games off basically, and can pick up right where he left off and his arms can be strong toward, you know, toward that playoff run if they get there. 
Um, and another thing about your Falcons, man, me and Rashad picked them to win the, the, the uh, NFC South. Yeah. And, man, we, we look so dumb right now. <laughs> You're not the only <laughs> but, one, I guess, too. <laughs> Man, hey, but see, but already abandoned ship thing, on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all out. But the thing about, um, you know, I've, you know, I'm from Georgia, so uh, we're from both from Georgia. But a lot of people, a lot of Falcons fans, want to blame Matt Ryan the most. And we put him on our panic meter last last week before going to the Houston game. And I thought I, I knew Matt Ryan would have a bounce back game. Um, is what it is. But we, I, I played Will Fuller and Drag Kings. I, I started Watson because I was like. This Atlanta defense is the main problem, and I don't know why. You know, a lot of people want to blame Matt Ryan for it. You know, with a struggling O line, no running game, but we want to blame the quarterback when the when he put up thirty two points and they still lose by twenty. Like that, just you know, those things can't happen. And um, for the Falcons, man, I was totally wrong on them going into the season because they're not. They're you know, we say eleven teams over over five hundred. If you had told me that before the season start, I definitely would have Falcons in there without no, no question. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm guilty of blaming Matt Ryan, but I've got my own reasons behind it. I know the Falcons defense is bad, and you know what? It's not that they're bad. They're snake bit. I mean, <laughs> every year they got a year a guy going out with injury, whether it be Neil, you know, or whoever is going out with an injury for the year. So they are snake fit. They did address the O line issue through the draft as well as, you know, they, they got hurt. <laughs> they it kind of teed me off because what I see from Ryan is you know, it's more of a leadership thing that I see. Um, mm. He's going in, he's doing what he has to do, but, you know, there's no, it's not like the old Matt Ryan. There's no leadership on that thing. There's no fire coming out of him. I don't know if it's just he's tired of getting put on his butt every single game. Um, I don't know if he's just tired of trying to force it into Julio every now and then. You know, his if you look at his passing, his passing the accuracy is actually kind of off this year. Uh, he's not making the he's not making the usual passes. He's not connecting on the usual passes that he normally does. So I start to question: Is he possibly injured a little bit? I mean, and not really coming out and saying it. It's there's just something wrong with him this year that I'm noticing. That you know, I, I nitpick at him every year, but this year it just kind of seems like there's something wrong, and I don't know exactly what it is. I think as a whole, the Falcons just. They paid the wrong side of the ball. You paid everybody on offense, and now you can't pay for defense. So, yeah. and then when the guys start going down, if your dra- if your draft picks don't hit, you're in trouble. So, um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't help that ownership is kind of you know Arthur Blanks is great, but I mean, it says a lot when you have a Chick Fil A in the stadium and it's never open. So <laughs> that's, that's that's real. That's that, that's that Sunday oh. motto, man. <laughs> Hey, but no, Rashad, you you pinpoint to it though about the draft picks got a hit because we we look around the league and look at other teams who defenses are like 49ers, for example, the Packers who dra- who paid the offensive side and and built through the defense draft. The, the Falcons tried this. Uh, Vic Beasley looked great the first his first season, but he hasn't he hasn't panned out. Too far looked great early in his career. Now he's 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 falling off. Uh, you got tap tap. Uh, was it McKinley yeah, was Karen's talking all that smack when he got um he got drafted and he he's not really you know outside of Grady Jarrett and Deion Jones like you know well obviously and Neil who never be there anymore so yeah. Deion Jones and Grady you can't really pinpoint to nobody else they let uh what's the tackle y'all let go a couple years um year ago Pope was it was it Pope Dr. Terry Pope your hand Terry Pope yeah I I feel like that's somebody you probably should have kept. You know, but uh, but like you said, Rashad, you, you 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 pay one side of the ball because now we pay Freeman, who you know I don't advocate paying running backs, but you pay Freeman, let T- Tevin Coleman go, and now you see what yeah. Tevin Coleman does in the Kyle Shanahan system versus what Freeman does in this co- uh, Derek Cutter system, which doesn't really you know rely on running backs. So um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of mixture of things about them. Yeah, last yeah, year I mean, defense banged up yeah. too, so that hurt. Yeah. yeah, and you let the best, you let the better of the two running backs go, like you said. I mean, Tevin Coleman should have been a Falcon for life, pretty much. I mean, he fits the system that they have. But even, but even keeping Coleman though, it still wouldn't work out because they're still paying two RBs, Matt Ryan yeah. and and Julio, and with the offensive line not really hitting and the defense not really hitting, so you'd have had just skill players, but they they lost Shanahan, so it would it would just been a. a Still the same situation, even with, with, with them keeping Coleman. Just put up great stats, but you can't stop anybody. 
Yeah, that's true. All right, let's move on to the uh, the AFC North. Talk about the NFC NFC being good. The AFC North is is the worst division in football. It's not even close. Uh, you have the Bengals, who who just ruined my prediction of the Cardinals going winless all season. Now they're going to be the team that go winless. Uh, they're on five. Uh, I think they're bad at everything. Uh, like I, I haven't seen anything that that sparks any improvement. I mean, boy, having a good season so far, but. Uh, you got the Steelers who got to rely on a third string quarterback now, um, and the only thing they beat was the Bengals. Um, yeah, the Browns who it beat Luke Falk, you know, in the Jets. So I mean, we can't really that's 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 an easy one, and they did play good against the Ravens, um, but the Ravens shot themselves in the foot in that one. And to be honest, the Ravens, I mean, up and down team, but they're going to they're going to win this division by default, and it's because of everybody else. Uh, in my opinion, and they can just be eight and eight, and they'll help. They'll, they'll win the division, um, and that's kind of that's kind of bad. Yeah, I mean the Bengals. It's time to start selling your assets if you're in Cincinnati. I mean, if last I heard, I think uh, New England's inquiring about AJ Green. So man, they better not do that crap. They better not do that. It's very possible you may see Green in a Patriot uniform uh, when he gets back. Uh, the, really, the only guy you may want to keep, you know, like our Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, the young guys that you've got, I would even move uh, Giovanni Bernard. I know there's a team out there that would take him. Uh, you just trying to sell and just get – just stockpile on draft picks is all you can do. You're right, man. Baltimore is pretty much going to win it by default unless, uh, you know, unless Cleveland turns it around somehow, which I don't see it with the schedule coming up. I don't see it. But, you know, Baltimore, this – I, I would have never expected this division to be the worst division in the NFL. I mean, never in my wildest dreams. No. But, you know, injuries to Big Ben, the overhype of uh, Cleveland, which I still think is is coaching, you know, a lot of it, as far as the offensive line, but coaching a lot of it too. I mean, you have so many high-paid players and you have so many guys that are explosive. How do you not make that work? Um, but, yeah, Baltimore, I think, by default, will take this. Like I said, unless Cleveland can turn it around, uh, it's Baltimore's division to lose. Baltimore will not win the division. They won't do it. The schedule, their their schedule is the opposite of Cleveland. Like Baltimore is struggling right now. Like they barely beat the Steelers, and they had a third string QB in. And if Juju didn't lose the ball, well, he well they got punched that out. But if Juju didn't lose the ball, I think Pittsburgh would have probably still won that game. Mm-hmm. But um, after Baltimore plays uh, Cincinnati, their schedule is going to. Is going to be the opposite of what since of uh, not since but Cleveland's is because Cleveland gets the tougher team right now, but their back end is going to be so easy. It's going to come down to the last week of the season. But Baltimore is going to start playing. They're going to go to Seattle. They're going to probably lose that game, and then they'll get New England. Even though it'll be a home game, I still take New England to beat them. Um, they're going to get Houston. They're going to have to fly to LA to play the Rams. The Four Nines will fly out, and then they have to go, uh, go to the Bills. And then they'll still get uh, the Browns towards the end to like week sixteen. So I don't think the division is. I, I can't. I can't hand the Ravens the division right now. Um, eight and eight is what I thought it would be anyway. But I'm not going to handle the division when uh, the Browns' last few games are Bengals twice, Arizona. They can beat the Ravens again. That'll be the tiebreaker. Miami and they can split with the Steelers if not beat them both times on a second, third string QB. So all, all the Browns have to do is just. Get get to their bye week. Like even if you lose to Seattle and the Lions, just get to your bye week. They're losing those two teams, definitely. Yeah, so <laughs> just get to just get to your bye. <laughs> just get to your bye week. Um, I think at that point you can rest some guys. You start getting your your secondary back, like get Ward back, because um, Cleveland's defense isn't a problem. Like the defense is going to keep them in a lot of games. Yeah, shit. I got they that that defense. It, it ain't a, a good problem. It's not. <laughs> It's not something you're gonna rely on. No, nah, like Cleveland's problem. <laughs> Cleveland's problem is like when your quarterback. Like I had my Twitter run about Baker. Like for fantasy, I'm out on him. Um, for his career wise, I don't want to judge him too early, but I think he's gonna probably just be a middle of the pack type of guy. He's not really. Bro, it's it's not it's not Baker. Baker is not the main issue on that. It's it's the, it's the old line, yeah. So yeah, you can't yeah. and 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 that's what people have to realize. Like. Yes, for fantasy, we can blame Baker. Okay, that that is that is what it is. Um, but in reality, like 
if Nick Chubb can't get going, then that's that's the thing. Um, you know, a lot a lot a lot of quarterbacks. You know, everybody don't have everybody don't have Mahomes, don't have don't have Russell Wilson. So you can't have the or Deshaun Watson, the improvise the quarterbacks who Lamar Jackson, who don't need the offensive line. They can just run around and, and make things happen. You know, Baker Baker's not the he's not athletic um, not like that. And if if he's if he getting pressure, there's nowhere to go. And that running game can't get going. It can't open up the your Landry's and your OBJ's, and you know you pay you pay well you trade for OBJ, you trade the offensive lineman away to get a pass rusher and Vernon, and now it's kind of you know faltering at you right now, and now your, your offense can't get moving, um, and which which is going to hurt the defense even more. Even if the even if the defense is average, they're going to be below just because the offense can't get going. Now they can be on the field the whole time, and you play a team like the 49ers who run it up your butt all day long. You know, you're gonna get gassed out, which happened to him. So it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of the. I don't, I don't see, I don't see the turnaround for the Browns. I mean, the schedule can get light, lighten up, but I mean, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned Arizona. I mean, uh, they they can lose Arizona. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see they're not that much talented in them, um, especially with the O line. Um, you and you can't rule out. I mean, Cincinnati's horrible. But a Cincinnati Cleveland game is always, always close. So, I mean, you really can't say they're going to go in there and beat up on Cincinnati both games. Um, they have a back end schedule that is favorable. But, you know, outside, once they get one with the uh, Patriots, Broncos, Seahawks, and Bills, you got Steelers, Dolphins should be a win. Steelers again, Bengals, Cardinals, Ravens, Bengals. I mean, I could see six and one being the best out of that, but I wouldn't be surprised to see five and two, maybe four and three. It's just the way Cleveland's been playing. They've got to really turn it around. Yeah, I don't think they're a bad team just because – all right, the Tennessee game, that was a close game until, like, towards the end. Baker started turning the ball over a lot, and they start, you know, they, they, they score a lot of points on the back end. But uh, they beat the Ravens, who I don't think the Ravens are good. And the four Niners game, it kind of got out of hand once Callaway popped the ball up in the air, and you know that kind of turned the game because it could have been fourteen ten. But once that play happened, it was a down, it was just downhill sled. And then so uh, the Browns' biggest problem was the Tennessee game was penalties. They cut penalties down each game, like they went from like eighteen to like nine, eight, seven, six. So like they're they're cutting the penalties down. Now they got to get Baker to cut the turnovers down. So once if the O line can just get just get some good you can't, get protection, they'll be fine. You can't fix it. You can't fix it whole line of the season. I, like without unless they unless they go trade the first round and hope the Redskins want to give up Trent Williams. That's about the only thing you can do to fix that offensive line. Like the Air is come off the street, you know that you try try to bring in. Like I mean, it just it, it, it's it's hard to nitpick because you got like, like like for example the Patriots, they're having to dive in and do extra work because. They they lost three guys, you know, on mm-hmm. you know two offensive linemen and another uh, a backup swing guy. Then you and then your fullback goes. So now they have to work on their protections, you know, weekly, week in and week out. And they have the best O line coach in the, in the game. So it's kind of like it's gonna like if, they, if they if they have a little problems with it, I, I know Cleveland's gonna have problems with trying to trying to trying to fix it. And um, any team with a pass rush, which is why Tennessee was able to to make break and turn the ball over, which is why I think. Steelers won't lose twice to him. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's just because the, the the pass versus is going to get to Baker, and the Brown the Brown is it, it's going it's going to rely on the Brown the Brown defense is going to have to be the one to win the, the win games like that when when he they getting killed they're going to have to force turnovers in. Now, granted, a third string quarterback does help you, like you know you know as a as a Brown court you know Brown defense coming in that help you if he's still there. But I mean, Mason Rudolph and Coach Protocol, so he's going to clear within a week. So you know that's not going to be the case for long. But um. Like it's gonna, it's gonna have to. Somebody else is gonna have to step up. The Browns' defense is gonna have to come to work because any team with the pass rush, uh, like I said, Pittsburgh gonna get like Pittsburgh. I, they gonna get at least one from them. I, I don't, I don't think the Browns sweep them because because you say the Ravens are not good, and I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what you're pinpointing at the Browns would be good. You know, especially when we, you know, with no offensive line, the run game, the run game is the run game is definitely what they need because you saw what happens when. They play the Ravens. If they have a run game and they can shove it down your throat, that's a whole different ball game. A whole whole different team. But if, they, if Chubb can't get going, 
that's that that's really what it is. It, it, it's not even more Baker. It's not you know. It's it's really more the O line in their run game. If they if that becomes great, that's what Baker was good last year. That play action, all that stuff. That that's what's going to drive them home. And if they if that can turn around first, then I can get on band with you about that. But like I said, Ravens can probably go eight and eight because you you, you probably you, you might be right about the, the Ravens being a pullback candidate. And it but by just because by default. Of everything else going on that we've seen so far, like I mean, like I said, things could change in in a week. But things we've seen so far, you know, you know, the Bengals not coming back. The Steelers, the Steelers are okay. They just, I think they're just going to hang around and just be five and eleven, six and ten. But can the Browns do anything to 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 right the ship? And I mean, they can. And I'm not saying they can't, but it's like, when is the turnaround going to happen? Because if they lose to Seattle and Patriots coming up. And that that'd be what two and two and five, two and five going into the bye, like that means you you have to start putting out these wins quick because even if the Ravens get nine, let's say the Ravens get nine, then that means you have to you have to go, you know what you have to you have to win seven eight games down the stretch to to even win the division. So, you know, do you like? Can we say that after week eight, when Kareem Hunt gets back, that might be a turning point because yeah, you have a you have a very weak offensive line. But then the play calling can go with a dual back if you've got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, kind of similar to the old Miami days when it was uh, Ronnie Brown and I believe Cadillac, Cadillac Williams, or and that was Auburn. In Auburn, they were doing it. Yeah, together. but we talking about uh, it was Ronnie and Ricky together. Yeah, it was Ricky Ronnie. Williams. I mean. Yeah, you they, you would see them run a dual backfield, and it kind of made sense because you didn't know who was going to get the ball, you didn't know which way they were going. There was a lot of misdirection, and that actually worked for the Dolphins because Ronnie Brown was having a, a damn good year until he tore his uh, ACL, I believe, that year. Um, but, yeah, it could be week eight when you get a dual running back situation like that to not necessarily, you know, it's going to help for the offense that much, but it could spell some of the stuff for the offensive line. I will say around week 10. Their, their buy is uh, week seven, and they'll get in the wing on week eight, which is, I'm going to just go ahead and book that as a loss unless they just prepare – even. No, I don't think I don't think they I don't think they can do anything to beat. Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, not I much mean, anybody they, can do. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, like New England's so banged up, and they really don't have any weapons. That's true. So, you know, that's true. No, you're so, right. So, so you right. so right. can come off your bye with a lot of time to prep. So I mean, you could put, put right. together right. a great game plan and possibly steal it because New England's not going to go sixteen. No, they're going to lose to somebody. No, nah, they and, and uh, New England. New England really had their struggles this season. They, it just the fact that they're playing. I mean, outside of the Bills, they played nobody. So it's like we don't really worry worry about it right now because they played Redskins, the uh, what uh, Colt McCoy. They played uh, Fitzpatrick. Who else they played? Uh, Luke Falk. Like they, it, so it's possible because Baker Mayfield way better than them. So you know, that, that's possible. Hmm. Well, there's, what they uh, need, there's... what they need to do is uh, play the tight ends more. I mean, like I know Ricky Seal Jones and. The Mitchell Harris ain't all that, but they need to – I just have to use them block. Like, they need to get, get a blocking tight end or something and just use six people to block. And Because, I mean, cause who can really stop OBJ and Landry, um, you know, unless they fight with him like Marlon Humphrey does. And so so I, you just, you're going to have to scheme, scheme the mess out of each week, and I'm going with the tight end, put them on the field, and we're going to have to have these packages where, you know, the tight end block and then release and get open because we're going to have to need go, – got to buy Baker some time because that's – and then buy chubs some time on the ground. So that's 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 what's going to happen. Got to happen. Yeah, I, I I agree with that statement for sure. It's going to be interesting down the stretch. Yeah, but it, it neither here or there. The AFC North is 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 the worst division. I because I mean I think everywhere else. I mean obviously you could say the AFC East, but they only they got two good teams right now. AFC AFC South got all four teams in the mix. And then the AFC West, yeah, I mean, you still got you still you got the Chiefs still there, Chargers, Raiders, and the Broncos might be one and four, but they're not a one and four team. So um, we're gonna we're gonna pinpoint the AFC North as, as the worst um, in this division. Now we talked about these other good teams, NFC. Um, last thing is who 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 can y'all pinpoint to to being a team that's kind of that's kind of like you know you don't know how real they are. Um, through these five game, you know, five weeks because it, it's still a low sample size, but you only get sixteen games. But um, is, is there any, any team that you can pinpoint right now that you like? Well, you still got to see because it's not enough. Texans. Mm, I like that one. Yeah, Texans is a good one, very good one. 
Yeah, that's um, a good one. Yeah. You know, I I'm gonna say in the AFC, I give me Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo's got a really top top defense in the league, but if you get you know best man Josh Allen on the field, that's a team that can you know pretty much run the table. Not run the table completely, but they can make some major major noise. And let's be honest, they gave the Patriots all they could give. If Josh Allen stays in the game that in that game, I think Buffalo upsets New England there. Yeah, you know the Bills were my surprise team coming into the to the NFL season. I had them the wild card. I I wouldn't go too far to put them above Patriots, but no. you know I think I think they could be I think they could be what Chargers were last year. Like the Chiefs were the one seed, but the Chargers like had the fifth seed locked up for a long you know for for a long time. I think the Bills can do that too. Um, and you talk about Josh Allen, he learned a lot, and and I'm I'm he he the coaching for Sean McDermott, office coordinator. Brian Dayball from New England, they talked to him because against Tennessee, he didn't make the same mistakes he did against New England, which is the same exact defense. That's, that's the same defense. Tennessee and 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 and, and Patriots are the same defense, built, built by the same people. Um, and it's like, instead of him throwing, about, throwing the ball in the double coverage, he decided, you know what, let me throw the ball away. And that's what he did. And that's and that's why I'm glad that he learned from that. Yeah. Because, I, cause he, I mean, because, I mean, he, I, I won't say he cost them the the Patriots game because they were still in the game. But you threw the ball, you threw you threw three picks away and gave Brady more chances, even though they didn't do anything with them. Yeah. It's like you still you still put Tom Brady on the field and took your off, took yourself off the field. Um, so Bills, I, I like that one. Now, Rashad, you got to explain this Texas one as far as like what you like what like like give me your your, your insights of why you choosing the Texas. Well, I mean, it's for multiple reasons because they don't have Clowney. So the, the the pass rush hasn't really been there. So I'm not, I'm not sure how good they are defensively. Fair. And then just uh, just the games they played, man, they could have beat the Saints. And then – Should have. Yeah, they, they, they <laughs> should have. <laughs> they they could have beat them. But then, you know, they go out and kind of like lay an egg against the, the Panthers. So then they, they barely beat – they barely survived Jags. And Jack should have won if they didn't try to go for a stupid two point conversion, like just kick a field goal and play for overtime. Yeah. So I'm so I'm not really sure how good Texans are. I love the Sean Watson. Um I love DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, we saw what Will Fuller can do against the Falcons. He took the top off and went crazy. And they still have Kenny Stills and QT, um, Carlos Hyde. He's been a you know, I won't say a surprise because we still thought he had game, but you know, he's been a uh, a steady back for him, better than Lamar Miller, in my opinion. So um, it's just I'm not sure if they're really good or not just because of the games they play. Like, are they really good or are they just middle of the pack? Um, like, I think their division is going to be off a grass to the end of the season too be- mm-hmm. because, like, look at um the Colts. Like, I think the Colts play Texans in, like, two weeks, I think, because I think Colts have a bye coming up. Yeah. So like, so that will be a game where we can kind of gauge how good the Colts are as well because the Colts lost to Chargers in overtime and they lost to uh, the Raiders, but they beat the Chiefs. So I'm not sure. How, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how good the Colts are either, man. Like, so that's why I think the the Texans and the Colts when they play each other and like just going down the stretch, that'll be a intriguing uh, series. And I still had Jets win that division down there too. So I'm going to say. The two teams that we we know are going to probably be in the AFC Championship game, the Patriots and the Chiefs. Now, nah, listen, yeah, the hit, I'm, I'm listen now, listen, <laughs> listen now. All right, so if the Pat, all right, so the only reason why we're saying the Pats are, you know, the great team is because of what what we've seen before in the previous eighteen, nineteen years, right? That that's really the 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 reason, right? Because we talked about it, you know, they played Luke Falk, they played Fitzpatrick. The Steelers had Big Ben, but the defense wasn't good. That was a, they didn't have no safety. Now they got Minka. Uh, that was Devin Bush's uh, first game, and then and then it's the offense was first time they you know they didn't have you know Bell and Brown for the first time ever, whatever. Um, and they struggled, and then they played Cole McCoy. And with the with the injuries that they're having, because the New England has the New the, the bug right now, the injuries that they're having. They won't ever play a good team besides, I think, the Chiefs and the Ravens are the only two. And I think they play um, – They play the Eagles. And play – so – but they have the easier schedule when it comes to – if you rank every – whatever it is, they got the easier schedule in the league. So they're only going to have three or four games that's going to be good. And with the Bills, with the Bills twice, and that's the only – and Bills are 
already played them in Buffalo, so then I, I doubt they're going to win, New England and win. So yeah. they're probably going. They're probably going to be fourteen and two, four, or maybe thirteen and three, and really not battle tested. Or if they are, it's kind of like you know the what the can we see? Because the defense is playing great right now, but is is that is that number skewed a little bit? Is kind of what I'm. I'm not, and I'm not saying the Patriots are not a good team. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, because we will sit here and say the Cowboys are not good because they lost the Packers and the, you know, Packers and the uh, Saints, but be up on, the, be up on the sorry teams. But the Patriots, that's all they beat up on the sorry teams. And if it wasn't for, a, you know, a block, a block punt, they lose that game to Buffalo. You know, you know, th- th- those are kind of like the outliers of, of, of the, how it is. And even Buffalo still have a chance to win that game. Um, and I, and actually, I'm not saying that they're, they're, they, not. For real, I'm just saying, like, we have to keep an eye on them because even Tom Brady, they they have been struggling. Um, because I mean, against the Redskins, it's nine seven at halftime or something. Like, I remember texting you, Rashad, like, what the hell's going on with the with, with the Pitchers game? You know, obviously, they end up them blowing them out, but um, them Dolphins at first was all like, what's going on? I, I you know, I, I want them to let's get let's get it going. And that was that was with Antonio Brown, you know, but um, with 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 the running game going back and forth. And then no weapons right now. I mean, I I know they're gonna be at the end. They're gonna be the championship game. That's just how it is. But you know, I think I, I definitely think the NFC team is going to win the Super Bowl, unless it's the Chiefs. But um, if they play the Patriots, I, I don't I don't I don't see the Patriots having a great a great uh, offensive game performance when it when it comes late in the season. The defense is going to be the defense. I think that's going to be amazing. Um, but that is my question right now. I, I want to I want I, I want them to play somebody else. Like Bills had good defense, but not a great offense. I want to see some. Like I want to see a a balanced team, which AFC don't really have nobody. I mean, because you, you say Texas, maybe it may not be this. The Colts don't have Andrew Luck. The Chiefs have no defense. Uh, you know, what I'm saying it's kind of like a it's kind of like a default thing again, where the Chief, the Patriots are gonna get there just because there's nobody else, you know, there. Um, and then one more thing I want to talk about the Chiefs, though. Um, of course, Mahomes is gonna win them games. That's, that's just how it's gonna be. But what what do y'all think about um, teams that you know when when it, when it comes down to the playoffs, you need to be able to run the ball, and you got to be able to stop the run. Like that's mostly how you know most Super Bowl teams beat. Right? Um, the Chiefs are twenty fifth right now in running the ball. Um, you know the like really if Mahomes if, if they can run the ball against the Colts, they probably have more success because all the Colts did was pin their ears back and just go at Mahomes all day long. Um, and then they can't stop the run. They're they're at the bottom of the bottom with the league as far as like Miami and Cincinnati range, and they give a 155 yards game. Um, so you know I'm more worried about the Chiefs more than I am the Patriots. But um, do do y'all think that can be a potential problem? Because yes, you have Mahomes who can probably, who probably will save you today. But if a team can just pin their ears back and come at you all day long, and you and, and you can't run the ball to to keep pressure off. Or two, if a team got the ball like the Colts, who was a run first team, you got to think of teams like let's let's say it's Chiefs versus Seattle Super Bowl, like you know Carson, they're gonna run down the throat. Patriots gonna run down the throat with Michelle all day and Whitehead and Burkhead, um, you know, and the other other run teams, Forty uh, Niners for example. If that's if that's a Super Bowl matchup. Like Kyle Shanahan gonna have his way. Uh, do, do, y- do y'all think that that can be a potential like stop? You know the reason why that, that could be like the downfall of the Chiefs or something like that. It's not the only reason why. I mean, their defense is. I'm going to say that their defense is atrocious as it is. The other reason why is because now you've had a full year on Patrick Mahomes. A lot of these teams, a lot of these uh, defensive coordinators, they're able to scheme against what he's doing. Mahomes is, you know. Let's be honest. Mahomes is like Steph Curry. I mean, if you get him in the open court, he's he's unstoppable. If you let Mahomes run around the field and allow plays to happen, you're not going to stop him. That's exactly how he won games last year. So if you're keeping Mahomes in the pocket and the pocket's collapsing around him, he's no good. That's exactly what Indianapolis did. That's exactly what the Lions were doing. The Ravens had some success with that. I mean, he goes out and throws four touchdowns against the Raiders in the first half, but nothing at all uh, in the second half. And the Raiders have a decent D, too, as well. So it, it it's a lot of these defensive coordinators have actually been able to scheme on Mahomes. So it's actually Andy Reid's job to make this offense, you know, t- take the next step, basically. Um, he's got to make, you know, I think what it is is that he's trying to make the big play 
too many times. So it's not just the defense that's going to kill him. I think it might be Mahomes as well because he can't have that big play every single time. And he's holding on to the ball too much. He's trying to get out of the pocket. They're not allowing him to get out of the pocket. So, I mean, even look at Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is not the same tight end that he was last year. I mean, we, we can say Kareem Hunt was a difference. It probably is. He was a better running back in Kansas City. Tyreek Hill is the best, you know, wide receiver, but they didn't need him. You know, what happened to Sammy Watkins? It, it comes back to defense quarters know exactly what's going on, and Andy Reid needs to do a better job of scheming against defenses now. Well, we're talking about the Patriots first. The Patriots are legit. Like, they, their schedule this year hasn't been the greatest, but – when they were last seen against top offenses, they were stopping them. The Rams yeah, couldn't do anything. That's last year, though. That's last year. But, not, but, it, not, but, it, not but, but it's the same defense. They, they they added people. Like they didn't lose anybody. They added Jamie Collins. They added people. Like they didn't. No, they they lost. They lost their best player, D and Trey Flowers, <laughs> on the D line. Patriots. The Patriots have never paid D line, and they've been fine every year. So I'm not worried about that. I mean, they they were stopping the Chiefs. They were stopping the Rams. So they're going to be fine. Like Patriots are going to probably be 14 and two. Guaranteed for the AFC Championship, and they'll probably end up rematching the Bills in a championship just because I don't think that the Chiefs defense isn't good enough to stop anybody. And if the Bills, who I think the stats don't show it, but the Bills might be a better defense than the Patriots. So the, if the Bills run to like the Chiefs, they can probably beat the Chiefs because all you'll need is Josh Allen to make a few plays. Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna go out on a limb, I don't even think Mahomes survived the season, honestly. O line yeah. is okay. His angle's already messed up. Hill's coming back soon, but anything can happen with him on the field or off the field. Sammy's banged up. He's never healthy. I mean, you're relying on Pringle and Demarcus Robinson and these Williams guys and Shady McCoy. Andy Reid is great, but it wouldn't surprise me if they lost their first playoff game, honestly. Um, so the AFC is New England versus everybody because they're going to by default have. The AFC Championship in Gillette Stadium, and nine times out of ten, <laughs> unless you're lucky, New England. Unless you're like the Ravens, who have a, a defense and can run the ball that can normally beat New England. Unless you're a team like those old Ray Lewis teams, you're not going to beat New England. So they should probably still be in the Super Bowl no matter what. But the Chiefs, they have too many problems. They they can't stop the run. They don't have a reliable back who can carry the ball 25 times in the cold and and get you a win. So. Um, Chiefs gonna have a good season, but I'm still not sold that Mahomes can even survive the season. As long as he's there, they will have a good season. But his his angles messed up already. I mean, he got rolled up in the Jazz game, got rolled up again in the Colts game. I just don't see him finishing the season. Like all it takes is a a bad. I don't want him to get hurt. I like seeing him play. He's electric, but all it takes is one one bad block, somebody to fall around your ankle again, and now you're getting surgery and you're out for the year. So. Uh, I can't put a lot of stock in the Chiefs right now, but New England, they'll be fine because the, the schedule's easy. They they have a game that travels. Good defense, running the ball, and when you need Brady to be be to be great, he'll be great. So they'll they'll be fine. Edelman, he'll get a chance to get healthy. You'll get Harry back off IR. I mean, Harry, he's probably in the film room just studying film, learning how they want to use him. So they'll be- yeah, but does that mean he's gonna be good though? <laughs> you know, that's you no. Know, he's studying the film, but he got to perform on the field. I don't, you know, he, he's a rookie. I don't, I, I don't. I'm not gonna trust. I'm not gonna trust Harry to come back and help this team that needs, you know, needs weapons. Because the 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 thing the thing with the Patriots is they really haven't been that that you know that's why they struggle against the Redskins because Redskins front line is great. Like the, and that and that's but the reason why the Patriots are going to be there because like you said is because default. If you got eleven teams in the NFC are good, that means what on the other side? AFC, sorry, like that just that just what that's what what it means. And there's no there's no team because Kansas City don't, don't have the pass rush like that. I mean D Ford and uh, not D Ford. Um, what's his name? That came up from Seattle. Frank Clark. Frank Clark and and Chris Jones. All you got? Uh, who else you got? Ravens. Ravens got a good pass rush, but. It's not it's not as as it used to be with no Terrell Suggs there. They um who who else who else is there besides Buffalo and Tennessee? But Tennessee we can't we can't rely on a quarterback. Um, Jacksonville could be a good team, but Jalen Ramsey don't want to you know don't want to be there. Um, and like you said, if Houston 
they got rid of Clowney. So it, it's not it's not no teams in over there in the AFC side that can, uh, uh, I guess what I just want to say is like effectively put pressure on Brady because Brady was on his butt against the Redskins. The Redskins was was all in, in his in his grill, and you got to think you put Patriots in the in the NFC. I don't think they make it out. That like, I don't think they're they they don't they don't wherever you want to put them at whatever division you want to put them in that they they they're not gonna make it out like they, and they, I think it's by I think it's by default and because we haven't seen Brady really have to do anything and he's kind of when he had to do something against the Bills he couldn't do it he couldn't get it done um mm-hmm. so it's kind of like I'm not and obviously he's forty two I mean what forty one forty two years old so obviously his, his age is gonna catch up to him but um is 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 I'm not saying that they are a fake team it's just it's just the fact that they don't, they don't they don't have to play anybody. There's no team suitable in the AFC that can really stop them. I mean, it, and that's why they want Antonio Brown so bad because they knew they needed somebody to to get open. I mean, Edelman can get open as well, but Josh Gordon, he doesn't look like the, the, the same explosive Josh Gordon, prime Josh Gordon, and he's not even that old. But it's kind of like you know you got you got inconsistencies in different places. The defense is great, McCourty's Gilmore. Even uh, Jamie Collins, they're all great. I'm not worried about defense. Defense is going to be defense. Uh, but I'm talking about more the offensive side. And, uh, I mean, I guess you don't have to put any points up, but when you're playing the Dolphins, Steelers, you know, the Jets, Redskins, you know, it's, it's not it's not that much. Because, like I said, if we talk about the Cowboys not being good because, they, you know, because the only, only team that beat the, the good the, was the sorry teams, I mean, we can say the same thing about them too. When's you know, the last time we saw New England look good through September or like early October though? Like they this happened last year with the Lions. They got killed by the Lions and some other teams. They were struggling against uh, the Jags Tennessee. last year. In Tennessee, because those are two teams that can get to the quarterback. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like if it's, if it's a team that can put pressure on Brady, you know, just like we talked, to, especially now, like just what we talked about Baker Mayfield earlier and Matt Ryan, the Brady had the same problems. It just because. It's because the offensive line is hurt. You know what I'm saying? Now he got the same problems as them, where your center's gone, who've been there for a long time, your left tackle's gone. Uh, you got to move things a lot, a lot around. Uh, it's, it, and it's, and it's, they have the same they have the same problems as Baker and, and, and uh, Ryan does, but they can do different things. And that's why I said they were scheming. They, they schemed so hard. And that's why, you know, McDaniels and, and, and Bel- Belichick, won, they, they're the greatest, like, low, low key, de- uh, you know, combination together. Because they they know how to attack teams, but then again, they're not playing nobody right now. Is 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 all I'm leading to. This is where it's scary for New England because they're playing good, but they're not playing good enough. So I guarantee you, Bill is on the line right now asking Washington, "What do I need to get for Trey Williams?" You know, he's yes. on the line yep. mm-hmm. with Cincinnati. What do I need to do to get AJ Green? This is where Definitely. this is where we see the Bills make. I mean, not the Bills, the Patriots make moves at the trade deadline. When they're good, but they're not good enough, and Bill knows it. So I guarantee mm-hmm. you will probably see a couple of moves by them and be like, well, there it is. You know, that's what yeah. we expected. That's, that's, now, that's, <laughs> now, that's true. And my thing right there to y'all is, why in the hell the teams help the Patriots? <laughs> like, it's been happening the whole – it's been happening this whole franchise. I mean, the whole time they've been together, they make a move, and you'd be like, why did that team help you? <laughs> yeah, it – it's mind boggling. It's it could be mind control, like Jedi stuff. But <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it it's it's the way it is, man. You know, they they get the players that everybody wants but can't handle, mm-hmm. and they go to New England, and it's like night and day. They're you know they're back to their Pro Bowl self, and they're playing at you know a high, um, like with high energy. I mean, it, it just happens every single year that way. That's why you can never rule out Belichick and Brady because they're always going to pull up something out of their out of their sleeve. Yeah, I don't see it as help. Like it's just like the NBA. Like why would you not trade a player who's going to be a free agent or something like that? So it's kind of like the same thing in the field. Like why would you not trade a this going on player and get back of a fourth or fifth round draft pick? I mean, it's just that's just the nature of the with the business. I mean, I mean, yeah, but you got to think like for example, if uh, but with the Redskins, they don't get they don't care. They but see, it's like. If there's another team that's out there willing to give me a you know a first round, I would really, cause think about it, Larry Tonson was a first round for the Texans. I know I, Trent Williams is better than him, so I can get something. You know, I don't have to take the Patriots first round pick or since that just like since that if they want to trade AJ Green, you know, uh, you you definitely got to give me a first round pick. But it's like 
I'm I'm gonna need more just because you New England, <laughs> just just because you New England. I'm because I'm, the Patriots won Antonio Brown, but Steelers didn't want to do it because obviously they can't beat them. They can't beat them with a B, so definitely can't beat them without him. So I, I I can understand that factor, but I, I guess for the Raiders in Cincinnati in that case, they're they're at the bottom anyway, so they don't care. They just, they just need the, the assets. They need um, the draft picks. Plus, right, you can you can move a second round pick and even a guy like Nikhil Harry to Cincinnati if you wanted and get A.J. Green. I mean, A.J. Green is definitely, you know, he's injury prone year in, year out. But, you know, you can afford to give up a Nikhil Harry because it doesn't matter who you are in in the Patriots organization. If you're a wide receiver, you're going to be plugged in somewhere. They can plug in any receiver at any time. That's, that's true. Yeah. You were talking about the Cowboys, man. Do we think that cost itself that $40 million already? He cost it when the season started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he, well, how much did golf get? Uh, well, if if it well to me, that should be in between Wentz and golf based on leverage of 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 what you can show me. Like golf went to the Super Bowl, so he should he gonna have to get more than that just because of that factor. And Wentz been hurt. Yes, he had an MVP season, and he probably he probably most likely would have led them to the Super Bowl anyway, but he didn't do it, and. uh and he been injury prone, so that got that got at least got to get that, you know. So he might be in the middle of that, but um, he going I think if he had to keep like a little money meter, like he was, he was definitely at forty million the first three weeks. Probably yeah. came down, probably came down about thirty two last two weeks, and played Jets this week. He probably go about thirty eight. <laughs> Can go there, week six? Is there any possible way? Because I, I'm looking at the Jets Cowboys game. It's in New York. Is there any possible way with Darnold coming back that you could see a possible loss by the Cowboys? Because I, uh, I say, I, don't think I so. say yes, but not like a complete yes. Um, I, I just, I mean, you got Le'Veon Bell, which obviously is not the Le'Veon Bell in Pittsburgh. You got Darnold coming back. You know, I the Jets' offense is a lot different with Darnold, so it, it, it's it's what I call it. Everybody calls it. It's a trap game. Cowboys are struggling right now. Everybody's, hey, they beat all the teams that they're supposed to beat. They beat all the teams that are like one and whatever on the season. The Jets are pretty much the same type of team. They're expected to beat them. Is this that trap game that we may see, like, throws Cowboy fans over the ledge and we're going to see a bunch of them jumping off roofs and everything? <laughs> I, I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think it's a trap game be- only because they lost two games in a row. Like, if they had beat the Packers, then I can, yeah, I can see what you're saying because we, me and Rashad talked about this last week. It was like, if you beat a, a Super Bowl contender but then lose to a sorry team, is that is that worse than losing to the Super Bowl contender and, and then beating the sorry team, even though it's the same outcome? Yeah. Like, you know, is, is, it, do, do, you, do you view that differently? But because they lost to the Saints, which they probably could they, – they really should have won that – could have won that game uh, if it wasn't for the NFL turn that, that fumble, Zeke fumble, which wasn't a fumble. Um, but then, you know, you go, you go into Green Bay and you get molly walked. It, at home, I you know I, I would I would expect you know re, a refocus by that team and and obviously when you know you're more talented than another team, you want to take all that frustration out on them, you know. And uh, yeah. but it definitely would be a trap game if they had, they had come back and beat Green Bay and got their high horses and you know down thirty one three and still win the game, blah blah blah. You know that's when that's when you come down your lady goose head, uh, especially on crawl to New York. Is it Black Monday if they do lose for Jason Garrett? Oh no! Nah, I think he's pretty much he pretty much safe. I don't, I don't think he goes because I mean because because you got to think like I mean what 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 else can you get though? Um, and they, Jason Gary is a good leader, and that's why he got his office coordinator call plays, his DC call plays, kind of like Harbaugh and Tomlin. You know, I think Gary fall in the same category um, with them because you think okay, they're you know Tomlin defensive minded, Harbaugh offensive minded, but they you know they just like just a leader and let the other guys handle the other stuff. I think that's what and that's what Garrett good at. I'm kind of glad he got pissed off at them, uh, you know, Sunday, you know, throwing the flag and stuff. And I, I'm pretty sure I never seen him angry. All he do is clap the whole time. Um, yeah. But I, but I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty glad he got mad because I know the Cowboys are gonna come out here with some like, you know, with some 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 attitude because, you know, like 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 we're saying everybody's saying y'all not good no more because. You only beat the good. You only beat the guitar team, so you can't beat nobody good. So they're gonna. I mean, obviously the Jets not good, but they're gonna have to beat them, and then whoever their next game is, they're gonna have to take it out on them too. So 
don't know. It's just the, ca- the Cowboys are. You're talking eight out of the next ten games after the Jets are against, like, good teams. Super teams. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eagles, Vikings, even the Lions in Detroit, going to New England, against Buffalo, going to Chicago, against the Rams. You're even going into the Giants, which, let's be honest, at this point, it's not a – it's not a guaranteed win for the Cowboys to go into New York and beat the Giants. So it, it's looking it's looking pretty bad if they if if they don't beat the Jets outright, it's looking pretty bad for the rest of the season. Yeah, the Cowboys they'll be fine. I mean, I still think Eagles win the division, but Cowboys they should be fine. As long as they beat the teams they're supposed to beat, they'll be in contention for the wild card with Rams, Seattle, and 49ers. They said they said um I think it's, it's like some kind of stat where teams that like win win like one possession games a lot the pre the, the the previous season always always fall back the next season and Cowboys are one of those teams um, and the Chargers are one of those teams as well um, um, the Dolphins are too but they suck so I'm, I'm not gonna count them <laughs> in this uh, but uh, but the Cow the, Cow- the Cowboys and the, and the Chargers definitely and uh, well, I, I thought Charger would pull back, and the cow the Cowboys possibly can with, with the schedule you're saying, uh, because it, it, it's going to get it's going to get lighter for the Eagles on, at, at the end. Yeah. And Cowboys going to Cow, you know, obviously when you play the AFC East, the NFC North, especially when they're all their teams are above 500, and then you got the Eagles to worry about. You know, that's kind of you know, and you had a first place schedule. That's yeah. just that's just cruel. That's just cruel because outside of Dolphins, Jets, Redskins. Everything else can, you know, you you got you got to come you got to come hard hard to play. That's just that's just sad for them. And even that Redskins, you're not playing Jay Gruden anymore, so you don't know what we're getting out of Washington. Oh, definitely. I don't know what. Like I'm not even like the, the Redskins Dolphins game. I don't want nothing to do with anything about that. <laughs> no betting, nothing because Miami I don't win. win. Man, Redskins might come out here and do something crazy and win by forty. Like like you know cause, you know it's, 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 it's sometimes they either. They either like like the change the change at, at the head coach or it's like it's either one 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 spectrum or the other. It's, it's not it's never in the middle. So it shouldn't be no close game with Redskins Dolphins. It's gonna be a blowout one of the ways. It's gonna get they gonna get blown out by Dolphins or they're gonna blow the Miami Dolphins out. Man, jo- jo- Josh Rose is gonna show why he was a good good draft pick because Colt McCourt or Haskins is not gonna beat Miami. I mean, they could. Miami. <laughs> I mean, it it just all depends because if you're talking about pass rushing Miami and Dolphins ain't got no offensive line and. What I've seen Redskins done this season. I mean, even when they played Cowboys, they was in the backfield. That's why Cowboys struggled early in the game. And I don't think Miami Miami's not the team like like the like Cowboys and Patriots are to turn up in the second half. So I mean, that's, that's going to be a game that I don't want to watch anyway. They both sorry. I just <laughs> like this two this, this two weeks in a row we getting two bad games like Cincinnati and Cardinals. Uh, now Redskins Dolphins, but somebody got to win it though. Uh, maybe they might tie. I yeah, I would say they could tie. I expect to tie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that well that'll wrap it up uh, for this week's uh, preach Preach with Rashad, joined by Rudy from Sweet the League. Uh, make sure you get make sure you follow him. Uh, I appreciate you, Rudy for joining us, man. Yeah, I appreciate. it. Thank you for having me, man. I hope uh, hope to get you guys on our our show too with Geo as well. That'll be perfect. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely, man. Let me get some fantasy wins. Send me a trade or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> one well, one and four right now, man. I need some help. I know, man. I know. You know, I I decided to, I called Mahomes and said, "Hey, I need to give another guy a win this weekend because I don't want to go undefeated in this in this league here and get all all this shit talking to me and stuff." So, <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, hey everybody on my team's for trade. It just has to be the right deal because that's what I said from the beginning. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. It's, it's gonna be fun to see who 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 pulls who pulls it out in Dynasty because uh, your boy on a two game winning streak. So <laughs> <laughs> let me get Saquon. I got Ronald Jones for you. Uh, see, <laughs> you now if you well, said it was Aaron Jones, I might I might start thinking a little bit about Ronald Jones. Man, nah, I, I got to pass on that. Man, that's, that's my that's my boy right there, man. I need Bruce to go ahead and let him let him keep doing his thing, man. Stop, forget Payne Barber. Stop playing him. Free I Rojo. Know. <laughs> I know, man. I've got him in another league too, and I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Rashad, man. We out. <laughs>